Uh, to quote uh, Matt Johnson from the, the, this is the day when Christy McBain's life will really change. It'll change for the better and she'll change Australia for the better. I congratulate Christy McBain on a fantastic victory in Ed Monero. And I want to give a shout out to all those people, starting with her wonderful family, but all those volunteers, those true believers who campaigned in what was an election unlike any ever seen in this country because of the pandemic. People who made calls, people who donated money online, the $2 donations uh, that went into producing material and advertising, we were always going to be outspent, and we were. But we campaigned strongly, and in Christine McBain, we had an extraordinary advocate for the people of Eden Monero. It was an against the odds victory. We had the retirement of a sitting member who had served his nation in uniform and then served in the parliament with distinction. He was very popular, and the takeaway of that just uh, one year after uh, he was elected in 2019, meant that those circumstances combined with the pandemic, which is creating a political culture whereby we're all hoping that governments succeed and that it's not business as usual in this parliament. The fact that we've had uh, Labor and the government uh, combining to pass stimulus packages meant that it was a, a, a different political environment. Uh, she stood against her main opponent, was a, a two times candidate, someone who'd been in the field since uh, 2018, effectively continuously. And still, we saw the government, of course, throw everything at it, uh, as uh, we would expect uh, them to do. Christy McBain will be a champion for the people of Eden Monero. She's passionate about her local community, she's articulate. She has an extraordinary capacity, and she is someone who will look for solutions, not look for arguments. For all those people who voted for Christy McBain, she will make them proud. For those who didn't, when they see her in operation, they will think about and consider giving her a vote at the general election, because Christy McBain is what Ed Monero needs. This is a community that has been through drought been through bushfires, it's now going through a pandemic. They're doing it tough. And Christy McBain has empathy, but she has more than just empathy uh, in an abstract sense. She's about making a difference to people's lives. And to see Christy McBain walk onto a farm, work, walk into a small business, uh, talk with the community, is to see someone who is uh, incredibly connected uh, to that community, and that strength and that warmth came through during the campaign. Christy McBain will stand up for the forgotten people of Eden Monero, those who've been left behind during the bushfire crisis and still require assistance, those people living in temporary accommodation in caravans, those people living in vans uh, with uh, newborn babies. She'll stand up for those people. Christy McBain will stand up for those who've been left behind by JobKeeper, who haven't got any assistance during the pandemic. Christy McBain will also stand up when this government implements its snapback that it's talking about in September that it kept secret because of the by-election uh, being held just yesterday. There are 4,822 businesses that are receiving JobKeeper support in Eden Monero. They employ an estimated 18,000 workers. The idea that all that support will just be withdrawn on one day will create uh, economic devastation in communities, not just Eden Monero, but including particularly having an impact on regional Australia. I've been very proud to campaign over the last uh, eight weeks uh, side by side with Christy McBain. Uh, it's been uh, a great privilege. I love campaigning. I look forward to the big one in a little while. And I will campaign with the same vigour and energy that I've brought to this job and I've brought to this parliament since the day I walked into it on the 2nd of March on my birthday in 1996. I look forward to the big one. And uh, I think that uh, we said the people of Eden Monero should send the government a message. They've done that. 
I just hope the government receives it. They declared victory at half time last night. Uh, I'm not quite sure what counts they were looking at, but the government needs to listen to the suffering that is occurring on the ground in Eden Monero, and Christian McBain will make sure that those voices are heard. Mr Albanese, do you concede that you would not have won the election if it weren't for preferences from the shooters and from the nationals? We have an electoral system that uh, the Liberal Party wouldn't have won without any preferences from anyone either. No one got 50 per cent, so um, that's just a matter of fact. And in, most, uh, in most seats in Australia, candidates don't receive 50 per cent of the primary. I did last time, by the way. Uh, Mr Albanese, this, um, this by-election was built as a test of your leadership and it was a narrow victory. Do you think this is enough to stop the talk of a spill and can you right now guarantee that you'll lead the Labor Party to the next election? Well, given the talk is just amongst the people here and no one in my caucus room, uh, I don't see it as an issue and never did. What this campaign was about was not people with power, the Prime Minister or the leader of the Labor Party. This campaign was about people who don't have power. Those people who we visited uh, just outside of Kabaga on Friday who are living in a caravan They've been living there for six months. They still have debris on their property. This was about them. It was about people who can't get assistance, the small businesses, who don't know what's going to happen to them after September in terms of JobKeeper. This was about all of those issues. It wasn't about uh, leadership. I uh, made that point during the campaign. I haven't changed my view. It wasn't a matter of convenience. Hang on, Phil, and then... Um, Scott Morris has got really high personal approval ratings at the moment, particularly with the downward of the coronavirus. What's your interpretation of why that didn't translate to a vote on the ground for the coalition? Well, every leader, um, the Premier of Tasmania, uh, whose name escapes me... Yeah, good one. Um, is on 94%. Uh, Mark McGowan has the names and addresses of everyone who's not in his positive column because there's about 30 or 40 people in the entire state of Western Australia. That's the culture uh, the, at the moment. And I want people to succeed. Uh, we want to get through the pandemic. Uh, what, we, uh, what we need to recognise, though, that uh, whilst people want that, and, and we've been constructive in that, uh, in terms of the issues going forward, uh, I've said uh, that was one of the reasons why it was a difficult circumstance for us, that the circumstances of, of having a by-election was not something you would choose uh, from, uh, from the opposition at this point in time. But we fought it, we fought it on the issues, and people voted for us. At this point in time, last time I looked at the AEC website, it was showing a slight swing to Labor. Uh, so uh, we're very pleased with the result. What was your impression? Well, I, I, I think if you look at leaders throughout the world, uh, people uh, have uh, leaders throughout the world, but Conti in Italy, in France, in Germany, uh, with a couple of exceptions, and there are reasons that are explainable about that, uh, leaders' are, votes are going through the roof. Jacinda Ardern, when I visited her in New Zealand, uh, just at the end of last year. Uh, she was in a position whereby she was not favoured to win. Uh, she's currently on 58% of the primary vote and has a 2PP vote of uh, well into the mid-60s. And uh, they've got an election coming up. Uh, that hasn't occurred here. And uh, I, uh, it's, it's up to others. I'm not a commentator. What my job is to do is to put forward the interests of the people that I seek to represent. And what Christy McBain did was put forward the interests of the people in Ed Monero. Mr yep. Albanese, you say that the voters used this by-election to send the, the government a message, but they certainly didn't use Labor to send that message. Their primary vote was down. So what message do you think they're sending you about your platform, the issues you represent? We, we have won a by-election against the odds after the government, as you'd be aware, um, were briefing out earlier in the week uh, that they were, uh, they were going to win uh, this by-election. Uh, these are, are difficult circumstances. This is a seat, bear in mind, Edmund Arrow 
is a seat that on the current boundaries is not won at any time during the Hawke or Keating governments. This is a seat that has always been held by the government as well. And some of the simplistic analysis about uh, what happens in by-elections uh, hasn't taken into account I ask you to think about when was the last time there was a by-election where a sitting member wasn't re-standing, which is what occurred in the last parliament, in an actual marginal seat. I, does it worry you the, the new foreign votes dropped three percent and the governments went up by one percent? Well, there were 14 candidates in this, uh, in, in this election. When you have more candidates, uh, you have a, a, a drop. People, people know what they're doing. Uh, people in Australia know that if they vote, if they want to also send a message, for example, I, I assume the people who voted for Hemp didn't think that Hemp were going to win the election, that they wanted to send a message about those issues and then uh, indicate a preference after that. So uh, in terms of, uh, of, of Chrissy McBain, what's, what's extraordinary here is that uh, given the circumstances uh, that uh, we've achieved this result, it's a very favourable result for us and on August, I think it'll be the third or the fourth, uh, whenever we sit here, Christy McBain will be sworn in as a member for Eden Manow. And I say this because I've also had contact from people in the coalition uh, to pass on their congratulations to Christy. Christy McBain is someone who has respect across the board. Uh, she's someone who, as the mayor, of uh, Bega Shire, of course, she was an independent mayor, worked with people across the political spectrum. She'll continue to do that. She'll be a very effective advocate, and I think the parliament uh, will be much stronger for having Christine McBain as uh, a representative. Mr. Just, Mr. Here. Mr. Mr. Your, Just here. What are your um, reflections on Giving Matthias Coleman's time in the parliament and as a cabinet minister? Mike Kelly. And Matthias Cormann. Matthias Cormann. Thank you. Um, look, I, I think that Matthias Cormann is someone who, who I have respect for. Uh, Matthias Cormann is someone who I have had uh, discussions, some of them public, some of them not so public, uh, including negotiations over the stimulus package, for example. Uh, I spoke with Matthias directly about the need for Ausstudy, AB study and youth allowance recipients to receive income support. I spoke to him about the family support whereby a range of people in those middle income uh, brackets were going to miss out. Matthias Cormann heard the message and to his credit uh, set about uh, arguing uh, within the government that they should accept our position and, and that happened. Uh, I think he, I have always found him uh, decent uh, to deal with, and I wish uh, him and his family uh, nothing but the very best. Uh, people who put themselves forward in public life, uh, particularly from Western Australia, uh, they, they do it tough in terms of travel, in terms of time away from home, and uh, I, I wish him all the best. Mr. Hang on, one. one. Um, uh, I'm giving everyone a go. You were brought up in public housing, the situation in Melbourne where you've effectively locked down thousands of people uh, in Flemington and North Melbourne. What's your view on, on the handling of that by the Andrews government? Look, I, I, I did grow up in, in public housing and I must say my heart goes out to those people who at the moment uh, would be feeling scared. Uh, I feel sorry that they've been in this position. Uh, but Daniel Andrews, I believe, is doing everything that he can to keep them safe. I say this to those people in public housing as well. That Australians care about you, we're thinking about you, we want you to stay strong and stay safe. Listen to the government advice. This could be a, this is a really tough period. Uh, people in public housing uh, these days, even more so than when I grew up, uh, tend, to be, tend to be doing it tough. The nature of public housing, because we don't have enough of it, uh, is that uh, people, in order to get access, uh, by definition, in difficult circumstances. So I say uh, to, to them, stay strong, stay safe. Mr. Thanks Albany, very much. Mr. That's Albany, a good way to end.